I can see you. Hi, Mark. Hi. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So, you got a school project. See? Yes, I am actually doing a project about conspiracy theories and just trying to get some sources, you know. Sure. Yeah, so I've got a, a couple of questions here. It's only like one page on Google Docs. Nice quick interview, you know. That's fine. That's fine. What uh, what uh, what school is this for? Uh, this is for my middle school in Colorado, uh, Liberty. Liberty. I know Liberty. Oh, you know Liberty? I oh, I lived in Boulder for twenty years. Oh, wow. Do you did you know anyone who did go to Liberty? No, I um I, tr I I grew up in Seattle and then I moved out to Colorado in the mid nineties and stayed until about 2015. So I didn't know a lot of young people. By the time I got out there, I was in my mid twenties. Oh, okay. But you, you just know about- I mean, I know the area about as well as anybody. So yeah, fun. Yeah. Cool stuff. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, go figure. Lived, um, do you know Boulder at all? Yes, I, of course I know Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Living in Colorado the, the... all my life. The the Republic of Boulder, yeah, it uh, it was a it was a fun place to be in the nineties. There was a lot of tech startups and uh, great experience. Loved it. Missed nice. the missed the water though, and I wasn't yeah. a huge fan of the snow. Although Colorado snow is different from Minnesota snow because you don't see the same snowman on the ground for months on end like you do up in Wisconsin and Minnesota. It melts so quickly, <laughs> so. So you were yeah. there, were you there? Oh, you, you would have been really, really young. Do you remember that really, really, really heavy rainstorm? Uh, yes, I I think I do. I remember a I couple mean, years ago. It rained so badly that everybody's basements flooded. It was, uh, the thing is, that had to have been at least six years ago. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I remember, only part I remember about it is the street that I used to live on flooded and yeah. my mom had to go out and get my grandma's car in so that it wouldn't destroy oh, yeah. her car. Yeah. Streets. It was awful. It was like a 500 year flood. So wow. anyway, what, uh, what questions do you got? So I just wanted to start off simple. You know, I've got, I don't have too many questions that are, you know, amazing. This is, is for a school project, you know, so. Sure. So starting off, um, how did you first learn about like flat earthers and the whole flat earth community? I got butter on the bottom of my cup. The um, I learned about flat earth from uh, how to. I first got into it in 20, the end of sorry summer of twenty fourteen because I had looked into just about every con. If you get, if you're on the internet long enough, you're as old as I am. Uh, you looked at a lot of things. And Flat Earth was curious. I, I mean, I thought it was an interesting topic, so, but I thought it was stupid. I was like, nobody could possibly believe in that. And <laughs> then I made the huge mistake of actually looking at it. And the longer I stared at it, the worse it got. And there was nobody but me looking at it. And I mean, I didn't have a lot of friends that were into it. In fact, I had no friends that were into it. There wasn't a, there wasn't a peer group. We didn't have conferences. This is way, this is back in the beginning. And I look, I stared at it and worked on it as a problem. Try to try to solve it for nine months. Couldn't do it. Not, not without loose ends. And so I decided to make a series of videos called flat earth clues and put it out on the internet. And that's was the beginning of this weird chain reaction that led you here. So how, how did you, you found me from what behind the curve documentary? Um, I actually was just trying to find some flat earth, like news articles or YouTube videos or anything. And I found a news article. Um, I don't remember what website it was from. I just yeah. found a news article that was talking about you. Like you were this crazy, like <laughs> crazy guy, you know, yeah. so I yeah. thought it was interesting. So I decided to come check out your YouTube channel and I ah. saw you had all your contact information down there. I was like, why not? Yeah, yeah, you be transparent if you can. And so I was and I did and uh, that that was something I've never been, I've never shied away from that. I know it's really weird that the internet is this paradox. We want to put ourselves out there, but only part of ourselves out there. Very few, few people actually put their contact info. The women shouldn't probably do it ever anyway. 
but um, I decided to do it just so I could have people write, you know, contact me directly and say, okay, you, you are wrong about Flat Earth because of this. And I got the opposite, which was awesome. So, so you had more people who were agreeing with you oh, than people way who more. Were trying to dispute you. Way, 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 way more. Um, 90, 90 something percent of the people that contacted me were were wow. doing that. You know, saying the pro. In fact, all all my subject matters. The, there's a playlist on my my channel called uh, Subject Matter Testimony Shows, and all these people started contacting me just from all walks of life. And going into it, you know, the, all branches of the military and engineer and flight um, instructors and air traffic controllers and just about anyone that has to do with transportation or ballistic shooting, they all contacted me and said, yeah, it's not crazy, man. Here's why. And we, you know, and then I, all these other things, everything so, see, if you believe in things happen for a reason, everything's just started dominoing after that. Um, I got a radio show thing after that. People started interviewing me. Um, we started doing conferences. I started traveling overseas to do speaking engagements, got a commercial, you know, the documentary came out, all this weird stuff. And all I did was not say no. You know, I, what they was like, okay, well, it must be here for a reason. Therefore I am going to do it. Uh, I believed in Providence. And so that's where it took me. Wow. Oh, wait, so, you, so you haven't seen the documentary yet. I actually have not. I oh just, my God. Yeah, yeah, really... go on Netflix. There's a there's a documentary that's been out for a couple of years now, um, called Behind the Curve. Not yeah, made not made by it. us. It was made by an LA team that hated us. Oh, so is it? What what's it all about? It, does it just talk about the flat Earth or well, yeah, more about you the, or the people behind it? And matter of fact, here, let me. I'll send you the website. I'll put it in chat. Behind the Curve film. Yeah, here. So is it more about the lives of flat earthers or more about just trying to debunk Both. The flat earth? Both. It goes into some of the people that were there in the beginning. We shot it, uh, I think, most of 2017. The conference was at the end of 2017. And then 2018, they released it. And or the end of 2018, it was picked up by Netflix at the end of 2018. And yeah, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. So, d did they tell you that this film was going to be, like, trying to dispute all your claims and everything? Well, or? yes and no. In the beginning, they said it was going to be a human interest piece. And it's interesting because uh, I, I listened to, and I didn't even know this until I listened to the iTunes version. There was a director's commentary on the, on the iTunes version, and they were talking to the producer and the director and stuff like that. And... There's this spot in the movie where I'm at the conference down in Raleigh, the first one down in, in 2017, and a 12 year old walks up to the mic. I know it's around your same age, and he walks to the mic, starts asking me questions, and they all of a sudden realize there were kids in the building, and that's when they turn and they go, "Oh no, 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 we can't have kids, you know, looking into this because this is this is conspiracy crazy. You can't be influencing the youth." And that's when they decide to not, I, not in my opinion, turn it into a hit piece, but there were certain people they did not treat kindly after that. And they were supposed to be objective and they didn't, but I get it. And actually it worked in our favor because it made the audience, and I sat in studio audiences across the country, um, made them feel safe. Even the title, Behind the Curve, meaning you know, you're not so smart, you're behind the curve. <laughs> and uh, which is clever because it's a play on words, the whole curvature of the earth. Yeah. And it was good. I mean, it was it made the audience feel safe and it resonated very well and it did very well. I mean, Netflix, it was tracking in the top documentaries for months and months. And it was it was awesome. So I don't I I would have changed very, very little. Wow. Yeah, so there's there's the link for it. It's on Amazon and YouTube and Google Play and Netflix and iTunes and all that stuff. I guess that's pretty strange, you know, a whole documentary going against everything you say and you love it. <laughs> well, there's an old saying in production and it has to do with media in general. And you'll learn this, you'll learn these things, which is even bad publicity is free. Meaning it doesn't matter. In fact, producers, I, I, I had this conversation with several producers. They say it doesn't matter whether you love or hate a topic as long as you're engaged in the topic. 
And it goes, in fact, sometimes people love to hate something so much that gets even bigger ratings than if they actually love it. So, I mean, the perfect example, um, I, I don't know if you're old enough to remember Jersey Shore, the, the series on MTV. People hated that show. Hated that show. <laughs> And they hate, but they love to hate people on it. You know, it's like, oh my God, I hate this guy so much. It was almost, it's almost like soap operas. Soap operas run the same way where they, um, you love to hate certain characters. So again, I don't, I don't, it never mattered to me whether or not um, they, you know, whoever was coming into this loved or hated the flat earth as long as they were talking about it. Because we would recruit members via that. There would always be someone in your audience, whoever, whoever audience it is, that would be interested in it. Then I have a story after story after story after people like, oh yeah, I went in, you know, oh yeah, the host hates it. In fact, I've told, I've talked to this, uh, talked to this with hosts of the show. It's like, I don't care if you like it or not. What I care about is your audience because the stats say that a certain percentage of your audience is going to start looking into this. And they did. It was awesome. I mean, our, our load in terms of emails and just overall response doubled overnight when Netflix thing came out because Netflix is huge. And, and that was, you know, yeah, a lot of people hated it, but there are a lot of people that were interested in it. So I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, I guess that completely makes sense. Any oh, publicity, oh, free well, publicity. No, here, I'll give you, I'll give you a great example. Great example. Hang on one second. Uh, hang on. Do you have access? You, you've used Skype before, so you know what's in, um, how to click. How to click on things inside Skype. So if I put in this into Skype, if you click on that that link, you know who that guy is, right? Let me see if I can get that real quick. See it in chat? Yeah, I see it. Okay, if you click on it, it pops up a separate window. I'm guessing from your age group, you're going to know who this is. I got to wait for it to load. That's low fine. bandwidth, no, no, you know. No, take your time. Not a big deal. See it yet? Still loading. Oh my <laughs> God! How how can you how can you? Well, you're probably sucking up all the bandwidth on Skype. Oh you? yes. See. Get it? Yeah. So is it bad or is it good that he made a video about us and put a horrible picture of me on his thumbnail? Probably good because, you know, he's considered one of your top. So, well, he was before he got in trouble, but there's other people that have, have done it. Shane Dawson did a video on us. Uh, Logan Paul, who I just hate that kid, uh, you know, did a video on it. He, he actually crashed our conference in um, in Denver. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, just about every large channel you can think of on YouTube has done a video on the topic. Is it bad? Does it hurt us that it, they do this? No. No, in no way, shape, or form. So when PewDiePie comes out and says, he's done several of them, but this one, I mean, he didn't call us. He didn't interview us. He just grabbed some footage from a Vice interview from uh, HBO and and put did his commentary on it. So, uh, and how many hits is that? Like 15 million? Yeah, I'll take it. Yep. You bet. 15 million <laughs> people with, you know, look at Flat Earth as a title. Guarantee you we have some of his people. I mean, yeah, that makes sense because the people who believe that the earth is round, they're just going to go about their day thinking, yep. wow, it's crazy these people believe this. Right. And the people who think the earth is flat, they're going to come to you and they're going to try and learn more and try and help you out. Yeah, or or the community at large. I don't really care if they come to me. I mean, I've already got too much on my plate as it is. But as long as they're looking at the topic, great, wonderful. I mean, I, when people say, oh, you, do you mind if you have dedicated people that troll? You know, in P this case, PewDiePie is a dedicated troll. Is he trolling us? Yes, he is. Do I wish we had a thousand more like him? Yeah, I do. Of course I do. Uh, and we do have a lot of trolls, which is awesome. Great. More power to him. So on the thumbnail of his video is actually you, right? That's me. Yep. With a baseball cap. And it is not a flattering shot. And uh, next to me is Patricia Steer. And the reason why he picked the two of us is because we were in that documentary. So in media feeds on other media, which is awesome. You know, once you, you know, how things go viral. 
when people because people watch what other people put out and uh like for example logan paul i know was watching some of shane dawson stuff and shane did this really big special on flat earth got his brother involved i flew down and, and uh, met his brother and then logan paul says, oh i gotta you know logan paul models some of the stuff he wishes he could be shane dawson and <laughs> why why wouldn't you except you know i don't think logan paul's gonna be able to come up with a tragically gay backstory which is fine <laughs> all right anyway what else you got um so next question i have on that list is like what's your general idea of like how the earth is like is there a dome is it just flat like a pancake or flat square or? it's it's basically a building you are living in um it might as well be a hollywood backlot set a studio with walls and a floor and a ceiling uh, in the middle of that is a giant saltwater lake, which is all the oceans. And inside this giant saltwater lake is a whole bunch of uh, islands, very large, which would be our continents. And again, it's so big and so complex that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out till almost 1960. And by then, civilization had already been pretty, pretty well established. They decided to just keep it a secret. So yeah, so that's the, the long and the short of it. The star, there is no space. The, everything that, that NASA's ever told you ever is a complete lie. Everything up in the sky is just lights on a ceiling. No different than if you were in a planetarium or inside um, Pirates of the Caribbean ride down at Disneyland. It's just lights. You can't get there. And that's, that's basically it. So when people say, oh, no, it's a disc flying effect. I've got one of my things lying around here. One second. Um, so when people say, here's kind of what it looks like from and you've seen this model before the um uh when they say that uh wow i lost, completely lost my train of thought that there is no doll that there's space this is just this asteroid flying through space uh no no not at all there's why would you have space at all we have no idea what's outside of here but it's not space uh space is impossible there's everything that's that's talked about space is absolutely ludicrous um, real quick, the, the biggest thing, if anyone says, oh, no, there's absolutely space, say, okay, space is a vacuum, right? right? There's nothing there. There's there's no atmosphere at all. It's a vacuum. And yet it's sitting next to a thing, if it was a globe, it doesn't matter if it's a globe or flat, that has an atmosphere. Okay, well, what's keeping the vacuum from just shredding that thing and just ripping it off? Nothing. Nothing. What, if, it, what do they say? Gravity. Gravity's what's holding <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, 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 perfect. That, that is that is the answer, by the way, to just about every science question we ever we ever get, which is, well, gravity is a solution for all this. I go, okay, fine. Let's say you have above you. There's a second floor to your room, I would imagine, or a ceiling, you know, something above you. Let's yeah. let's say you turn that into a vacuum chamber. You had a valve above you. You pull the valve right now. What happens? It's not like the movies. It's instant. It's violent. Um, the air will equalize instantly and you will probably pass out and maybe die so the question is why didn't the gravity in your room keep the air from going upstairs and it's because vacuum will win every time vacuum is way stronger than than gravity so when you walk outside why is the air still here and then your initially thing is well it's gravity it's like oh do 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 you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room the exact same gravity that's right out there that's it's it's different here and then people get stuck no one has an answer for it no one i have asked scientists this over and over and over and over no one's got an answer which is what happens when our atmosphere ends and space begins what happens there where is it what what exactly happens you're telling me that there's air here and nothing here it completely goes against i know you haven't probably studied physics yet but the, it goes against one of the laws of thermodynamics, which says that pressure cannot exist next to not, no pressure without a vacuum. It's the reason why when you blow up a balloon with your mouth and you let it go, it always empties out. Always. Just flies off. Flies off. A million times out of a million times. You're never going to let go of that balloon and it's just going to sit there with a balloon end open. It's never, ever going to happen. So why does it happen with the Earth? Why? No one has an answer. There you go. That's... That's... That's a pretty pretty strong argument there. <laughs> I try. What else you got? <laughs> so if the Earth is in like this whole Hollywood style like big room, mm -hmm. what happens to all the rockets that like 
I have personally gone and seen launch from space centers. They go off into the ocean and they go nowhere. In fact, you could you could Google none of this information. By the way, I'm, I'm throwing you a secret. In fact, I'm going to throw an, an image of um, a simple NASA image into chat. It'll take a minute. Probably screw up my video. The um, if you if you go into Google and type in um, time lapse rocket launch right or rocket trail or whatever con contrail they will show you you know the, the 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 rocket especially at night but if it's daytime smoke it does not go up very far and then it just goes this just goes horizontal and that's it it goes horizontal off into the ocean and that's it crashes why 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 would no one would ever ever know any different because people their their attention spans are so short and once it goes out of visual range who cares it all comes down to the telemetry guys, which would might lead into your next question. It's like, oh, does that mean that everyone in NASA is in on it? No, no, not at all. Almost nobody's in on it. The only guys that have to be in on it are the telemetry guys. The guys that, that basically say, oh, okay, well, you can't see the rocket, but here's the latitude and longitude, or here it's th here's its three-dimensional point in space. The telemetry guys will tell you what it is. Well, you gotta take their word for it because they're just saying, it was, okay, well, that, the rocket's here, okay. That's it. That's all you have to do is get those guys on your side. And that's not a lot of guys. It's brilliant. It, it works very, very well. So yeah, you, so the rocket launch that you watched, absolutely real, real launch guys that built the rocket, real guys then, and they were completely legit and they turn wrenches and they polish things and they go home and they have families and everything's great. Nobody's lying, but there are a few people that are lying. Not much. 99% of NASA is off the hook in my opinion. So if it just goes and crashes into the ocean, yep. why make the effort of building a rocket anyways? Dun, why not dun, dun. try and blast through and why? see what's on the other side? Uh, they tried that. I know you probably haven't watched the clues. Did you ever watch the clues? The Flat Earth clues yet? You haven't watched uh, I've watched a couple of them. Okay. So I can't remember which clue it was when I talked about this. But we tried to bust through it for four years straight uh, the united states and the soviet union back in the late 50s early 60s when atomic weapons were a pricey number and they were very hard to get and basically from 58 until 62 they fired into the sky launched all the the nukes straight up basically trying to punch through this thing now of course officially they don't say that they were trying to punch through anything they were just doing high altitude nuclear tests um but that was it. They tried for four years, couldn't do it with even megaton weapons, quit. Both quit simultaneously, and that was it. They never did an aerial test again. And But it was good because in the process, they got to map out the sky. They knew how high the rockets could go. They knew what sort of arch they were looking at, and they knew how far they could send spacecraft without having them you know, roll over and go off into the ocean. Because remember, the, the, the main point of that was to militarize space, which is what they did. Meaning, and I know you say, well, we got SpaceX now and Google or Blue Horizon and Virgin Galactic and stuff like, yeah, but for a long, long, long time, we didn't. It was only the military. In fact, out of the 500, we'll say, we'll round up to 600. Out of the 600 people that have ever even claimed to have been gone to space, 99% of them were military. And not just basic soldiers. These are all high-ranking officers, usually colonel or higher. The United States military. It's 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 a brilliant way. How they've done it over the years has evolved very well. I mean, they've made mistakes, obviously, and social media has changed all that. But it's it's it was a solid plan in the beginning. So, so they did try to bust through, but they just couldn't do it. Nope, nope. And if you can't bust through with a five megaton weapon, uh, you're not getting through with that. I mean, and that's a, that's a guy thing. You know, when, if you see a wall, all of a sudden a brand new wall, it's like, you know, get the cannon, you know, we, we got to bust through it. And it's like atomic weapons. Nope. Uh, what else you got? Uh, we got harp, you know, high altitude, you know, frequency stuff. We can maybe, you know, use, use frequency weapons to, to do it. Nope. That's not working. What else you got? Uh, how about CERN? Maybe we can do some sort of Stargate through it, which is a brilliant idea. Um, so far, from what I can tell, they haven't been able to get through it, which would be the norm. If you're going to build something like this, you don't want people getting out. Ever. So speaking of building it, who yeah. who would have built it or how would it have formed or like what what is it? 
Okay, first off, I didn't build it. And no one in our, I'm not taking credit for it. And our civilization didn't build it because it's way, way too advanced. So it, there's only one of two ways you could go here. Either it's a very ancient civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves, much, much older, uh, or some sort of divine deity. But at that point, really, you're just splitting hairs because one man's advanced tech is another man's divine process. So, that, again, someone very, so a, a group that's been here a lot longer than we have. There's a line from Contact, that predates you, a movie, um, that, that when she asked him, when she asked the, the alien being, it's like, you know, who built this transit system? You know, it was obviously a billion years old. And he goes, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. It's a great line. And it's true in this case. We don't, we don't know who built it, but they're way bigger than us huh that's interesting hmm. so quickly before we move on yeah. i just want to go back to the rockets and nasa and stuff sure what are the videos that they like the cameras that they strap onto the rockets how do they keep those going if they just launch them straight into the ocean <laughs> there you go they don't that's a great question by the way i don't think anyone's ever asked me that i have to usually offer it no, they, they turn the cameras off. As soon as that rocket gets up around three minutes, four minutes in, they transfer over to what they call, you know, CGI, which is, you know, they say, okay, this is a illustration of what the rocket's doing right now because you can't see it. So we're just going to show you a computer generated something, something. And to this day, as a matter of fact, and it is one of the proofs, you know, people say, what would it take for you to believe in a globe? And I go, okay, fine put a freaking camera on a rocket that's going to leave orbit a capsule don't put it on the first stage or the second stage put it on the freaking capsule point it at the ground don't turn it off fire it off let the thing leave orbit and let us edit the foot or let us take a look at the footage and it's never happened in the history of space travel i mean statistically speaking do you know how uh, remote that is i mean for God's sakes, Elon Musk should have done this with SpaceX when he sent the convertible into space a few years back. And, you know, the red car, that thing supposedly left orbit and went to Mars. Nope, turned off the camera. Well, it wasn't going to show us anything. Crystal clear images from three different cameras on that thing showing the driver and the Earth spinning around. And then they're going to slingshot it towards Mars. And nope. Nope, we're just going to cut off the feed. It's like, wh why would you do that? Why? There's never been any footage of, of Earth as, you know, pulling away, turning into this little tiny blue dot. It's never happened. Why wouldn't you do that? And he, he doesn't want to talk about it. So. Huh. Strange. I know, right? What else? <laughs> I'm just trying to take that in first. Um. <laughs> oh, dude, I do this all <laughs> yeah. day. I have done this all day. It's, it, there is so much that, believe me when I say, can, can I prove to you right now? And I know some of uh, the people in my circles get mad. Can I prove to you right now that the earth is flat? Nope. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is this model? Yeah. Yeah. I can do that all day long. And people say, well, it's a reasonable doubt's not, not enough. I go, oh, it is in the court system. Reasonable doubt will get, keep you out of jail every hour of every day. And that's how everyone gets sucked in. Everybody, everybody that gets into flat earth looks at this thing and is going, this is stupid. I can disprove this. And the longer you stare at it, the more sense it makes. Until finally you're going, oh man, you get this weird moment. You're going, ah, oh, where it actually means more than the globe. The globe doesn't make any damn sense. Never did. The only, th what, the only thing that made sense was they just kept showing it in the classroom year after year after year after year. And then you put it in movies and all the other things, and we fill in the blanks. It, that's, it's, it's worked. Straight up conditioning. Huh. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you say there's no space, right? Nope. So, does that mean the moon is also just some projection from the yep, ceiling? just a light in the sky. As a matter of fact, um, and I know you're, again, you're probably not old enough to, I, 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 the closest planetarium to you would probably be Denver. You go there if you can sometime, which is you go to, you know, a planetarium, which is basically just this big domed, it's basically like a sports dome sports stadium. It's like a basketball stadium, but there's no seats. And you go in there and you look up in the sky. Can you see the moon? Yes, I can. 
Does it look realistic? Yes, it does. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because we're in a planetarium. It's just light on the ceiling. <laughs> My point. The point is, when you walk out of that building, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger building? And I know that's a lot to take in, but because it's like, well, because we can't fathom the engineering to build something like that. We can't do it. The biggest structure we could probably build is maybe 20 miles wide. And that would take billions and billions of dollars and would take forever to build. So, but somebody I think could do it. But you know, what, what could we do in 500 years from now? Or even a couple hundred years from now. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the moon is not what you think it is. That image I just threw in chat, by the way, of Apollo 18. That's a, that's a great example of it. That is just a studio shot right there. There is nothing real about that shot at all. And that supposedly was us on the moon in 1969. There, the longer you stare at that picture, there are so many things wrong with that picture. But we take it for granted because if it's in Life magazine or Time magazine or whatever the news things, it's got to be true. There's no video of this. It is just those shots. There's no crystal clear. It's not like, remember, we didn't have HD back in the day. So that was about as good as you could do. It was a still shot. So what, you know, wh why was there things wrong? I, I, I'll give you one thing if you're looking at that image, just one thing. I, we won't even look at the other stuff because I know time is, is of the essence. So in the real world, all shadows, if you have one light source, you go outside, the sun's out in the sky, all the shadows run parallel. They will never meet ever, ever, ever. They run parallel. Doesn't mailbox, telephone pole, tree, they all run parallel. It's just a fact, just what it is okay, so what the heck's happening on the moon? Because those shadows are going to intersect, all of them. You know, the, the guy that's taking the picture, the satellite dish, the flag, they're all leaning in toward his, towards each other. The only way that could ever, ever happen is if the light source was very, very close. Like, I don't know, 30 yards away on a tripod <laughs> with a guy holding it in a big room. So no one, no one will ever touch it. I, I mean, I have brought this up to many of you, but they just dodge it. It's like, well, no, it can't be real. It's like, oh, pff, whatever. Give me a break. We didn't Photoshop. This is straight off the NASA website. It's date and time stamped. So, so you think the moon landings were definitely not real then? Oh, definitely just, staged. Not even close. They were. They and it wasn't. It wasn't. They, they were just faked. It was the reason why they were faked. The reason why they were faked is because you didn't want private corporations getting into this. You had to militarize space. So what that part, the, the part they did with the moon was brilliant. You go there like six times in a row. Nobody dies. <laughs> Bizarre. Brand new technology. No malfunction. Oh, Apollo 13. Okay, did anyone die? No. No astronaut ever died. Right? You know, it, and it's like that was, the, by the way, landing on the moon would be the last thing you would ever tell to the public because in case you just cratered that thing, all of a sudden you turn the moon into a tombstone. That'd be awful. People would be reminded every day. It's like, oh, those poor people. That's all they, they ever talk yeah. about. So you go there like six times. And then in 1972, it's like, yeah, no one's really watching anymore. Nobody cares. We're just not going to go anymore. That's it. Goodbye, everybody. Roll credits. And that was it. That's all they did. And I mean, we haven't been back since 1972. It's been 50 years. What, how, what, what happened? What, what, what the hell? I mean, no, in fact, nobody's been there. Not us, not China, the, um, the, the, the European agency, Japan, India, nobody's gone. Only the Americans went and then we quit going. We didn't make a moon base. Why, 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 why didn't we go back? It was brilliant. And they've kicked that can down the road over and over. And over. I've talked to, I've talked to heavy, heavy science people. And I say, when are we going back? And they go soon. I go, really? Because I have heard that for the last six presidents. <laughs> They've all said the same. I've, I've got a clip of every president since Reagan. That's a long time ago. Saying, oh, yeah, we're committed to going back to the moon. Clinton, both Bushes, Obama, Trump. Everybody said the same thing. We're going back to the moon. No one's doing anything. Elon Musk, oh, yeah, we're going to go in 2018. Nope, nope, nope. No one's going back. Everyone's distracted. Nobody cares. It's great. So that picture you sent me is definitely on a set and you think behind them, there's like the TV show thing. There's no fourth wall. Oh yeah, it's yeah, just... yeah. There, yeah, the, the, that's again, it's why you don't have a, a fourth wall is because in, in every sitcom and every television show, you can't spin around 360. By the way, there's never been a video, um, especially in the moon, you would have thought that once they got there, what? I actually found a video online of a 360 degree panorama of the moon. 
on um, the moon? If you want to see that, yes, I can. I think I can find it real quick here. It's not. It's not a video. It would be a collage stitched together, and it would have been released uh, what three years ago. Um, this was released on YouTube uh, six years ago. I don't know if that's a collage or not. I remember seeing video from I think it was nineteen sixty something. Yeah. It was definitely three sixty degree video. On the of, move. Yes, somebody panning across, then they zoomed into a rock or something. They kept panning across. I would love to see it. <laughs> if All you right. can if find I it. Can find and if you that, can't find I it during this, send it to me when you can. Yeah, I will send it to you as soon as I find it. All right. That that's fine. If you can find it. Uh, okay, well, while you're on that picture, let's do two other things real fast. Uh, see all those lovely footprints everywhere? There's footprints all over the ash, right? And the ash mm -hmm. is uniform, three inches deep, which is super weird. In fact, no one ever with a shovel dug down to see what was below the ash. All these footprints everywhere, but there's no blast crater underneath that rocket nozzle underneath the, the spacecraft. That's impossible, especially if it's a 10,000 pounds of thrust. The, the ash would have gone everywhere. That thing would have been a splay pattern 30, 40 feet wide. Nothing there. The satellite dish you're looking at is a VHF transmitter. It runs off a car battery. It's not classified Intel. I mean, this is from 1969. We didn't have anything in 1969. Not even close to cell phones. We didn't even have 1,200 baud modems. And this thing, suppose, this thing with a car battery had a range of maybe 50 miles. Maybe. And the moon is 237,000 miles away. And this thing, not only was it broadcasting, you should have only done Morse code. Not only was it broadcasting, it was doing 10 frames of color video a second in 1969. With what transmitter? With what power? How are you doing that? You, but again, because people don't understand tech. It's like, oh no, there's a satellite dish. It's like, yeah, but you know the generator you'd need to fire that thing? It would be huge. You'd need an entire building. I mean, radio transmissions, get to get a 50,000-watt radio station, you, you need a, a generator the size of a small house. And nobody, nobody knows. We, and it's because in school, I'm not blaming the teachers that you deal with, but we are told, we are told just barely enough to get out of high school. Nothing about physics or engineering or chemistry or biology or microbiology or any of that stuff. And so, again, because it's in the magazines, people buy it. It's great. It's easy. And I won't even touch. You know what? I won't even touch the fact that there's not a single star in any moon photo ever. By the way, it's always pitch black. And people say, oh, it's exposure settings. It's camera settings. It's exposure settings. Okay, fine. You know in advance it's exposure settings. And you went back multiple times. You didn't change the roll of film to have the correct exposure settings even once to take pictures of stars? No. Do you know why? The, the problem was back then, and they at least had some forward thinking here. Remember, the bottom of that picture is date and time stamped. Well, let's say you do the stars. Remember, you can't just put lights. It's You've got to put the actual star constellations. It has to be accurate. So you, the belt of Orion has to be there, right? Well, if the belt of Orion is in a certain spot and you have some nerd in 3 a.m. in Nebraska all of a sudden wake up it's like no 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 the belt of Orion should be on the other side of them why is it there you wouldn't be able to explain it the the math would be too hard you can't fake it it's it's too hard to fake so they just said you know what let's just not do stars we'll just blame it on something else we won't do stars ever for anything we won't show stars and it worked so NASA spending all this money sending rockets into the ocean yep. and then doing nothing with it. Yep. So if they're really spending that much money and giving this much effort into trying to hide the secret of this of where we are, flat yeah. earth, yeah. then why would they make such small mistakes like the shadows or the stars or just small little stuff? Uh, no, like no, 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 I got, I got you. The bigger the production, the easier it is to make mistakes. You can't catch it all. Lord, I'll give you a great example. Um, you can go, there's there's several sites online, uh, but one of my favorites is like moviemistakes.com. The original Lord of the Rings, the very first one that came out, and that came out in 2000, I think. 2000, right? We've been making movies for a long time. The first Lord of the Rings, when uh, they were leaving the Shire for the first time, there was a road in the background with a car driving through it. 
None of the editors caught it, and it actually made it to the theaters before Blu-ray, and they ended up fixing it in Blu-ray. Okay, that's a multi-million dollar production, and you've got a whole bunch of people watching every single frame, and everyone was focused on the stupid hobbits. No one saw the car up in the corner. It all comes down to the weakest link for the most part. I mean, you, you trust people to do things and get things done, but you can't micromanage everything. I mean, you've got a million people working on stuff some things are going to slip through the cracks. Um, again, and you, you will, the difference is, is be, that before social media, before high-speed internet and social media, and that wasn't, you know, wasn't that long ago, we didn't have that. People, you just, they didn't get a chance to review things. But once Blu-ray came out and high-speed internet and you could go frame by frame through every movie or video that, or recording that was ever, ever, ever done, you didn't know. Now, You've got people that pride themselves. It's like, oh, look, the coffee cup moved from here to there and no one moved it. <laughs> you know, in, in the half a second, they, they used to change scenes. It's like, there is, you know, there's a, a production mistake. And again, it happens, which is why you have to do reshoots and stuff. So NASA doesn't spend, they make what, 50, they, they, their budget is $54 million a day, which is ridiculous. They don't spend even close to that. I imagine they suck part of that back into black sites and black um, uh, projects. But the rest of it, they try to do what they can. Although, to be fair, I think they could have spent a lot more on like the ISS. The ISS interior footage has just been horrible for the last 10 years. I mean, it looks like people that flunked out of film school have been shooting it. I, I, but again, they, they got away with it because the general public, for the most part, isn't watching. And the conspiracy crowd got into it, you know, some years ago. I mean, come on. The, even before us, we've been, there have been people, tech people, that have been questioning the moon landings ever since the 70s. They, they, and in fact, overseas, I'm really surprised that people overseas, and I've asked them this, you know, why they, uh, like people in Europe and Japan, and it's like, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? Oh, because we saw it on TV. Yeah, Americans, we lie about a lot of stuff. I don't know if I believe <laughs> I'll give you a quick one real fast. Um, I was in Egypt and I was talking to somebody and they were looking at me and really weird. This was before Flat Earth. And, and I go, what's the deal with these guys? And they go, oh, you're the first American they've seen outside of television. And I go, and? And they go, well, isn't everybody over there like ridiculously rich and, and powerful and Americans are perfect? It's like heaven, right? And I go, what shows are you watching exactly? And I know some of these are you, you won't get. And it's like, oh, we watch we watch Dallas and Dynasty and Falcon's Crest and shows that basically, you know, rich person problems, you know, and the and that's all they knew. And that's very clever. That's one of those things that our department, uh, you know, government, we, we monitor the shows that are shown in other countries. We put out this image that we can do no wrong. We'd never lie about anything. And as you know, between you and me, Americans never lie about anything ever. Oh, never, never. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. What else? You know, um, so I think this is an obvious one, but I had it written down on the paper yep. for the school project, you know. Do you believe in the other planets? <laughs> um, no, but but it's not, it's not as clear-cut as that. Do I believe there's something up there? Yeah. Do, you know, are they images? Or do they look spherical? Yep, just like the moon. Can you land on them? Nope. Nope, you can't. They're just... Big, bigger lights than the other lights. One is tinted red. The other's got a weird spot on it. One's got some rings. They're, they're just they're just part of a giant clock system that predates language. That's all it is. You know, it's, it's something you could depend on. I mean, ancient cultures have been doing it for years. It's like, oh, the stars are over here. The season's going to happen here. The stars are over here. Oh, there's going to be an eclipse. And it's, you know, it's that part is really, really great. It's been useful. It's, it's very ornate, very decorative. But it's still just a big clock. That's all it is. Huh. Wow. So, um, I guess building off of that, what do you think could be outside? Like, do you think our whole Earth is resting on something? Or, like, do you think it, we're just in the middle of some, well, I guess, not nothingness, but... Could we be... <laughs> here. This little model right here. Mm -hmm. Could this be us right here sitting in my hand? Possibly. Sure. sure why not? 
Um, why, why, why couldn't it be? I mean, people, people don't like this thought because it's like, oh no, we're too vulnerable. We're too fragile. It's like, are you kidding? This thing's 20 something thousand miles wide and three, 5,000 miles high. It's huge to us. Um, what's outside of it? Uh, I always like to say that it's an unlimited universe. Uh, if this place is 99% conflict, and it's something that if you're, as you get older, you'll figure out. And then it doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how rich, how talented you are. You always have something to complain about. Always. I got 99 problems. <laughs> Period. That's how it works. I mean, we've got problems on top of problems. If you're rich, you, you're worrying about money. If you're beautiful, you're looking in the mirror all day. If you're talented, you're worried that people are going to find out you're not talented. If you're a star basketball player, you're worried about the day you lose a step. And so on and so on. If that's the case of what's here, then outside of here, I think it's the opposite of that. I think it's an unlimited universe. You know, if you want to call it heaven, nirvana, Shambhala, whatever, that's what I think it is. I think we are, uh, and I think it's cyclical. I think you go there for a while and you come back here to gain perspective and learn something and you go back there for a while and you come back. I think it's a back and forth type deal. The only difference is when you come here, you're not allowed to remember that you were there. Because if you were, if you did remember that you were there, if you knew that you came from an unlimited universe, you would bail. <laughs> you, the first time anything bad happened, it's like, I crashed my car. Screw this. I'm jumping off a bridge. You know, people would, people would bail all the time. So you have this fear of the unknown, the fear of the afterlife, the fear of what's outside of this world. And it, it, it scares people enough that it's like, yeah, it, there's a saying. And I know you know some of these, some of these you don't. The devil you know versus the devil you don't know. And that is... Yeah, there's suffering here, but what's over there, which I don't know, that may be worse. So I'm going to stick with the, the suffering I know here. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I get it. It's human nature. So speaking of like, you know, you don't know what's outside. It could be heaven, whatever. Sure. Do you believe in like an afterlife or are yeah. you religious? Oh, yeah, or? yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I was raised in a Christian family, born again, but then fell away from that when... I got into university because I grew up in a very rural environment. And so I didn't even know. It's like, wait, there's other religions. <laughs> Christianity is, is not the only religion. And then I got into tech after that. And then it's like, oh, okay, it could be virtual. <laughs> and then it was like a whole other thing. I was like, oh man. But then when I got into this, it kind of snapped back to where, even though I don't really go to church anymore, I'm, I absolutely believe in a higher power because if this place is flat, if it, if we are in a building and somebody built it and whoever built it's way bigger and smarter than me. So, and some people, and, and I won't, I'm not being clever when I say this, does that mean that God created it? No, but it means whoever created it is much closer to knowing God's phone number than me. And so, yeah, yeah, I do believe. Interesting. So, um, what do you think, like, in your opinion, is the strongest argument for all these claims that you've made about the flat earth and the whole box and all this? Um, it's not even in the clues. The strongest argument has always been and probably always will be because it's so easy to do is long distance photography. Meaning, uh, and I'm not talking side to side, I'm talking off into the distance. We all know the argument that a ship goes off into the water and it disappears because it's gone over the side of the curb. It's gone over the hill. And that used to be true until HD technology came out. And I know you're not even old enough to remember what non HD is, <laughs> but it was really blurry cameras by comparison. It was, uh, it was, the resolution was terrible. I mean, I'm sure you've been to like somebody's house it's, or in school. It's like, wow, what the hell are you watching? <laughs> you know, it's really, really <laughs> fuzzy at, at close range. So what happens is, is that with HD cameras, the boat, which should be gone, you crank up the zoom on that thing. You can now see the boat again. It pulls it back into frame and then you let it go out again. You crank the zoom up even more and it goes back into frame and you can do this almost to the limit of the thickness of the atmosphere itself, you know, hundred miles or, or more. Well, that's impossible because the curvature of the earth says that thing's got to be on the other side of the hill. So what happened? You know, and, and people say, oh, it's a mirage, it's refraction, it's distortion. It's like, no, no, because we can do this with static or moving objects. They're perfectly clear. They're not blurring out. They're there. 
They're, they're always there. And we didn't come up with the curvature formula. That's mainstream science. The curvature formula, by the way, is eight inches per mile per mile, which means, uh, let's say it's, we'll just do a quick one, 10 miles, 10 miles away, it, you'd be 10 times 10, which is 100 times eight inches, which is 800 inches. So there should be 800 inches of curvature at 10 miles. And then it gets more and more severe after that, because remember, it's not stairs. So you can't just, it's not eight inches per mile, it's eight inches per mile squared. Anyway, once we found that out, everyone started running to the beach and shooting long distance photography because water lays perfectly level. So that's an easy place to shoot over. And it worked. People just started shooting stuff, lighthouses and boats and platforms and oil rigs and you name it. They're, they were all out there. And that was enough for a whole bunch of people to be convinced. So for, is it is it the, the big one for me? Uh, I like gravity versus the vacuum of the space more because with the, with the long distance photography, there's all sorts of photographers out there. They're like, no, no, it's refraction. It's an illusion. You know, they just won't see it. They refuse to see it with the gravity versus the vacuum of space. There's nothing you can do. There is no argument against it. And people will just, they'll divert. They'll just go to something else. It's like, well, I don't want to talk about that anymore. It's like, okay, so I, I win. You, you, you can't, you can't talk about it anymore. It's like, well, I want to talk about this instead. I mean, like that photograph that I sent you, that Apollo shot from 1969. No one wants to talk about that photo. I have sent this to so many people. It's like, I, I, let's look at this video instead. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay. So you, you just don't want to, I mean, they just, they, they just gloss right over it. And they're like, all right, I see where your mind is. Denial is a powerful thing and I don't blame them. Conditioning is a powerful, powerful thing. You show somebody a globe, you put that toy globe in a classroom and you leave it there from first grade up until you graduate from high school. What do you think people are going to believe it? It's like, that's my home. That's my home. That's what, that's where I live. That's my home. Well, how do you know that? Well, it's because it was there. I'll give you a great quote. And I, I don't know how much more you want to go, but let me give you a quote. George Orwell, the guy that wrote 1984. He wrote something. He was not a flat earther. And he's, he was talking about how people just believe scientists just because they wear lab coats and they're smart, right? And he said, it's funny, he wrote this in 1946. He said, everybody knows that the world is a globe. And when you ask them that, that how do they know? They just said, what are you talking about? We know, we, we know. So when, you know, but and you, you say, well, how do you know? They get mad because they don't know because they know. They know because they were told. Remember 1946, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody know in 1946 there was a globe? And you say, well, because because what, science did geometry? Did this or that, and it was like came up with these calculations? No one even got remotely close enough or high enough to to see you know what it really looked like. So how did you know? And again, it was because they were told. You tell people that for generation after generation after generation to where you have no family members old enough to even remember when it wasn't, what do you think they're going to believe? There's, there's a line from the Truman Show uh, from 1998, which is, we believe the world that is presented to us. We don't like to, we don't like to believe in lies, ever. And I, I was the perfect example of that. I didn't believe that people lied about anything. When people in political power lie? It didn't even occur to me. I mean, it, it, like spy movies confused me. It's like, why would we, why would we do these spy things? Why, we, why is there espionage? Why is there corporate espionage? Why, why do athletes, you know, I didn't even knew that, knew that athletes would cheat about anything. And again, sorry, let me throw one more thing at you. And that is there are things we believe, there are lies we believe in, we're willing to accept. And then there's others we're not. There's a line in the sand. It's like, yes, I believe that Lance Armstrong lied for seven straight years. <laughs> and then finally I had my title stripped away or, uh, you know, different players get hit with poor performance enhancing drugs or whatever. I'm willing to look at that or some sort of financial scandal. I'm willing to look at that. But you can't, you know, I don't want to hear about JFK. I don't want to hear about 9-11. I don't want to hear about this. I don't want to hear about that. Because it's outside of my comfort zone. People don't, people like their wheelhouse. They like their comfort zone. They don't like to think about negative dark things, which is why the Flat Earth is so perfect, because it's got a very positive aspect to it, which is if it was built, if it was created, then you're not an accident. The Big Bang is wrong. You're, you're not some, some stupid rock flying through space. It's here for a reason. You're here for a reason. Part of it's religion, I guess. But, I, you know, I, I think it's more than that. I think it's broader than, than just straight up religion. Anyway, what else? 
Um, I've only got a few more questions okay. here. I don't want to keep this going for like much, much too long. That's fine. That's fine. I'm, are are you I've gonna are you just gonna transcribe? Times. Do you want the audio record recording to this? Do you want are you? Um, I'm recording it right now. Okay, if that's okay. Oh no, that's fine. No, no, no. I treat everything like it's recorded it. anyway. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I might post it to YouTube. I'm definitely gonna show it to my friends Perfect. and teachers though. So. Perfect. Do what you want. Yeah. Um, what do you think the strongest argument like? against the flat earth or for the globe is the strongest argument has always been and i'm so surprised that more people I, I think more people don't bring it up because they just don't understand it is the antarctic sun that is the biggest argument against it ha has always been and which is the if we are living on a disc then the sun if it's just one light source of course that could be multiple if it's just one light source then 24 hours of sunlight at the north pole should be fine but it would be impossible to do 24 hours of sun on the Antarctic. And we've got mixed reports. We've got some people saying, well, no, there is no 24 hour sun, but I've also talked to people that were down there that says there were 24 hour sun, people that I can trust. Now, were they mistaken? Maybe, maybe not. Or maybe there's, a, there's multiple light sources going on. I mean, if it is a simulated world, if it's a virtual world or if it's a projection system, you can do just about anything you wanted with lighting to make it happen. But more, most people don't bring it up because they don't understand it the that being said there is no generic strong argument out there that that get get brought up to me because most people when they first hear about this have i mean they really ask basic questions i mean stuff you'd be amazed like one out of three people say well that's the case why don't the oceans fall off into space you know what <laughs> is it is it like asgard is it like thor or it's like a cosmic waterfall it's like that's a real question and or or um or why is the sun my one of my favorites is um why is there daylight why isn't the sun up all the time because if you look at the model the, if you look at models you'll see this giant sun above us right and it's like no the sun is tiny 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 but the only way we can draw it is that the sun is big enough to where you can actually see it in the illustration if it, the only way you can draw it is if you draw it about a thousand miles wide well, people see that and they're going, well, it's going to be daylight everywhere. That's going to be, it's going to be daylight everywhere. Or the other arguments, they'll be like, well, all the other planets are spherical. Therefore, the earth must be spherical. And I go, no, <laughs> it doesn't have to be. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, look, any, again, the, if it's, if it's just an image up there, you can put anything up there you want. Remember, the place was designed to be an illusion, which worked. Very, very, very well. So anyway, short version, there is no, the, the best argument is Antarctica, but nobody seems to, there is no organized front against us. I mean, I have, I cannot, hundreds of interviews, nobody asks, asks the same, there should be the top five against Flat Earth, and they never bring up, it's never the same top five. They always just come up with whatever they come up with on their own, it's usually some sort of textbook thing, or the ship's going over the horizon. That's always one or one of my, you know what? I'll give you, I'll give you one. That's very, very popular. It's not the best argument, but it's the most popular argument. The most popular one. It's not even a, it's not even a test. It's just an observation. And that is, I can see, they can say, they say, I've seen the curve from an airplane. And I go, really? You've seen the curve from the airplane. I go, yeah, yes, I have. You're convinced. You're absolutely positive. You've seen the curve from an airplane. Yes, you bet I have. And I go, I'm willing to bet money on that. Because Neil Tyson, the world's most popular physicist, he comes on um, a show on, on air and says that the Red Bull jump, where they were at 130,000 feet, there was no way they could see the curvature. And he thought that the, the, the camera angles were completely dishonest. They were using fisheye lenses. He was helping us in our case. I don't know why. And so if you can't, he's basically saying you can't see the curve from 130,000 feet. Well, if you can't see it from 130, you're definitely not seeing it from 30 or 40,000 or commercial airlines. I mean, that's what layers below way, 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 way below three times below. And I show that to people and I've, I've asked them point blank and they have just a tough time. They, I go, so is Neil wrong? <coughs> is, did Neil make a mistake? I've actually some, cause some people, because they can't handle it. Their ego is too damaged. They'll say, yeah, he didn't make a mistake. Really? So there you go. Huh. It's cool to see you opening up and 
talking about the other sides of the argument. Oh, I don't, Not... I don't mind. No, I mean, I had to. There was, I remember, I hated Flat Earth going in. Well, you don't know this because you didn't haven't seen the documentary. I hated Flat Earth going in. So I had to, I went from the other side. So when people yell at me and scream, and get all bent out of shape, I go, they say, why don't you yell back? I go, because I was them six years ago. I was absolutely them. So I would be hypocritical. I'm, I can't yell at them. Like, how could I even begin to? I mean, I understand what they're going through. So, you know, I had to, I had to ask all the questions that the other side would ask before I even switched. I had to, I had to convince myself. It's like, okay, have I as, answered everything that could come at me to my satisfaction and then, and then go into this? And <clears throat> I got most of it, maybe 90%. But there's still, you know, I still get surprised every couple months. Somebody will ask me something, something a little odd thing. But I've got the, the, the basics. Okay. So um, I've got a couple of questions about, like, the map of the Earth and, like, how it all is sure. geographically. Yeah. So where where's the center of, like, the whole plane? Is it the North Pole? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Uh, one second. I took this thing and put it back. So, yeah, if you can see this right here. And you can you can find this anywhere on Google. The the North Pole is the center. The equator is kind of like the inner ring, and then Antarctica that lays around the outside. That's okay. Basically, it. Okay, so I've got kind of a complex question to go along with that. How is it that a ship or an airplane can travel all the way around an Antarctic continent, like how you would on a globe? Right. Um, but on like a flat Earth. You'd instead just be going around the circumference. You just yeah. how is it that a plane or a boat can do that faster than it can go from New York to London? A plane goes around the circumference of Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Who? Planes aren't even allowed to fly over Antarctica anymore. Not even close. They've they've been banned. They've been banned since the seventies. Why aren't they allowed to do that? <laughs> Why do you think? Because crashes or no no no, no 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 you don't want people flying over antarctica in fact if you have a globe lying around there are shorter points i mean especially from south america oh my god i, I could spend a day on this but i'm not going to if you want to have some fun look into flights between anything in the southern hemisphere to anything in the southern hemisphere meaning from africa to south america south america to australia and or new zealand there are some routes that should ab or absolutely be shorter if you went over Antarctica, but that is not allowed. You cannot fly over Antarctica. Uh, in fact, that was banned decades before a GPS was even built. And there are excuses. I'm not kidding you. The excuse is, well, it's too cold. It's like, what are you talking about? It's negative something degrees at 40,000 feet, no matter where you are. I mean, you'll freeze to death at, at 40,000 feet. It doesn't matter if you're over freaking Phoenix. So why, why are you saying that? They, they don't know. They, they won't talk about it. They're just, they just know the routes are the routes. But what's more interesting is that the flights in the, in the Southern Hemisphere, 95, 97% of them are double connections to everywhere. And they always go north to above the equator and come back down. But if you look on a flat map, they turn into almost a straight line. Why is that? Why can't you, in fact, why can't you get direct flights from many of the capital cities? doesn't matter how much money you have. I've talked to travel agents in the Southern Hemisphere and they say, you don't have lucky you have it up in the States. I go, why? They go, you can get nonstops anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, there's lots of places you can't. So why? There's almost no nonstops. Now there's some people say, oh no, there's some nonstops. I go, yeah, there's so few. You could almost count them on one hand. So how is that even possible? You have a lot of population down there. So anyway, so there, that's sort of my answer to the Antarctic question. Planes don't fly around it. They don't fly over it. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, the planes, you'll, you'll get world record flights. They'll always fly around the equator. Nobody goes pole to pole. Why not? Well, because you don't want people looking at that. It's the reason why the, oh, by the way, oh, one other thing real fast. I'm sorry, I didn't even preface this. The big reason about Antarctica is you don't even know this is the Antarctic Treaty. The Antarctic Treaty, which was put in one year after NASA was founded, huh, that basically says that no corporation ever can um, do set up shop in Antarctica, ever. That sound a little strange to you? Doesn't matter how rich 
your company is, oil companies, gas companies, mining companies, none of these companies can set up in Antarctica and you say, well, it's because of environmental reasons. It's like, no, the treaty was put in place in 1959. Why can't you go there? In fact, the, it's not even up for review until 2041. PDF is out there online. People can look through it. It's amazing. Nobody owns Antarctica. Find me another piece of property anywhere in the world that nobody owns. No nation lays claim to Antarctica. There's all these tiny little slivers all over. It's designed that way so that if you want to go like traipsing across Antarctica in a plane, you have to file massive permits, pay huge amounts of money and get approval from multiple nations. Just screams go away. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And, and that treaty was put in place right after they figured out what the hell was out there. They flew around the United States Navy and the Soviet Union flew around there for 30 years from 1928 until 1955, 56. And that's when they figured it out. That's when they figured out how, how far this thing really goes. And they said, yeah, we're not telling anybody. Would you? I mean, think about this. If you, if you figured out what the world really looked like, do you tell the public? Part of you is like, oh, yeah, I should totally tell them. I'd be on the cover of Time Magazine, be blah, blah, blah. It's like, um, yeah, but think of what might happen. Um, all the, all the, every university would have to be shut down you know, for a while because you'd have to retool everything. Every, um, all the financial systems, world markets, we have to shut down for months. So, yeah, sorry. You don't tell people. I, I actually agree. It's a secret that should have been kept back in 1960. Not now. I think pretty, pretty much everyone would be able to adjust. Hmm. So, wow. Am I blowing <laughs> your mind yet? Kinda. Well, good. You know, also, um, my laptop I was just right here just died so I got to pull up the document I have of all the questions real quick that's all right Ugh, man I really hope my internet will be fast this time <laughs> here we go all right loading in all right I think I you only had like a couple left didn't you yeah I only had a couple left I don't remember them very well though I just typed these in because it's some I had to do for school you know I wish I could do this for more than just school. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Although it's a weird thing to get into, especially now. We'll see what happens with censorship this year. Yeah. We, we've lucked out so far. We haven't, we haven't really run into much trouble. Uh, not for flat earth, but um, uh, there's no guarantees. Okay. Um, all right. I've got it pulled up now. Okay. Um, I remember... I watched a couple of your interview videos and, you know, you would show these screens of little like hints and facts about the flat earth or the globe earth or whatever. Yeah. One of them said Antarctica is the most guarded place on earth. Yep. So who guards Antarctica? Like, why is it like, well, not why is it guarded, but who is guarding it? And how is it being guarded? <sighs> Okay, first off, the, the, the biggest thing that protects is the treaty, straight up. You don't even have to, I mean, we're not talking about missile silos that are on the beach. However, uh, is, there, is there military watching it? Yeah, the only people that are down there are the military. Uh, the military, military scientists, we've got bases that are out there. Some public, some probably not so public. And you monitor all traffic that's coming anywhere near the place. And are other nations involved? Sure. Do you want to keep most of most of it a secret? Sure. Compartmentalize the best you can. But yeah, a multinational force. Best best we can hmm. tell. Uh, but the biggest, again, the biggest way to defend something is to just keep people from going there uh, through red tape. More than anything. I mean, seriously, try 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 to do something down there. It's it's a the, the treaty is amazing. It's a, no one even knew it existed. That was the brilliance of the treaty. Plus, the whole place is just awful. It just just screams go away. But the treaty says that again. You think about this. Think about this. There are companies now that have so much money they can do just about anything, especially oil and gas. Colorado would be a great example. If you want, if I, if I own an oil and gas company and I want to start fracking in your backyard, I can make that happen. Or if not, your neighbors or something like that. I can, I can absolutely throw gobs and gobs of money in and do this. Why aren't oil and gas companies down there? They already announced in the 50s that the place had loads of oil and gas. So why aren't they down there? In fact, not only are they not down there, they're not even allowed to talk about it. 
they should be running full page ads in newspapers and magazines saying, wouldn't it be great? They should be greasing politicians with tons of money saying, woo, we should go down there. It doesn't happen. It doesn't talk about it. At the highest levels, a phone call is made. Simple. You call the CEO of whatever company, British Petroleum, Exxon, Mobil, 76, doesn't really matter. And you say, yeah, national security. Don't do any exploration down there. If you do, <laughs> you'll get in trouble. And we won't, you know, it's not like we're going to shoot you. We'll just have the IRS go at you for like 10 years and we'll crush you monetarily. That's all you have to do. I mean, the, the, the simple reasons you don't have to, you don't have to protect stuff with guns most of the time. All you have to do is, in fact, you know, why don't you hire, like, get a billionaire to get a fully fueled 747 and fly out there. Just ignore everything. Just go for broke. See if you can make it to the edge. You know, yeah, until that guy gets a phone call and says, oh, yeah, if you make it back, we'll put you in the poorhouse. And remember, you only get to be a billionaire because you love money. So anything else right. I can do for you? Let me see if I've got any other questions here. Um... Moon landings, we already covered that. Planets, gravity. Oh, what causes the ocean tides? Ocean tides. Ocean tides would be controlled by, it wouldn't be the moon. Let's put it that way. Um, let's do, let's, let's, let me divert for a sec. So most people would say that ocean tides are caused by gravity, right? Gravity is always the answer for everything. Well, it's funny because if you ask any hardcore scientist, they will say the same thing, which is, gravity they don't know what gravity is they can only tell you what gravity does they can only tell you the symptoms of gravity can't re reproduce it in any way shape or form so why are you building equations with gravity well it's assumed you don't know so if gravity to mainstream science is this magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of the ball we say it's some magical molecular force that pulls things straight down when it comes to the tides though would you let's say you were building a place like this Treat it no different than a video game like Fortnite or GTA or whatever, Minecraft. Does the moon in the sky there affect the water down below? No, that's affected by <coughs> the physics engine. Why would you do that? Because it's easier. <clears throat> Last thing you would do is turn the moon into a directional gravitational force and try to control the oceans with it. Especially it's a very, very small, which it is in GTA and Fortnite and all those things. It's a very, very small thing. It looks big, but you know full well it's not. And if you have any flying abilities, you can fly up there and hit the ceiling. You know full well what it is. So it's part of the physics engine. We can the, All the tides are controlled down here. Also, you might want to ask yourself, if you get a chance, why aren't tides um, more pronounced on big lakes? Why don't the tides do anything on lakes? Kind of weird, right? Anyway, go ahead. All right, let me see if I've got any other here. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty much the whole, Hooray! whole thing. So I'm done. We now, made it through. Now i got to do another podcast, which is mine, though, Yay. which is fine. Um, any resources? Do you need anything else from me? Do you need any? You got it pretty much what you need? Um, yeah, I've got pretty much everything I need. Um, I've got this recorded. Um, if the file corrupts or something, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll I, I have a backup audio of it, but, um, uh, yeah, everything looks good. So if something goes wrong, I can give you the audio. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Good questions. Thank you for doing this. Hope the project turns out well and, uh, you know how to reach me. Yeah. Thank you for coming along and agreeing to this interview on well i guess kind of short notice i mean i only talked to talk to you about it like yesterday yeah. so no no it's fine i i don't don't mind at all just like spreading the word yeah all right well i definitely gotta eat soon okay so. <laughs> have fun and uh you know let me know if you need anything else all right thank you see ya see you later bye, -bye.